Hey everybody, I'm Tim here with Southern Draws Rose of Sharon. You're watching Cigars Daily. Get more out of our content when you join the community on Cigars Daily Plus, where you can leave your rating for cigars right next to mine under each review video. In the world of creamy Connecticut cigars, the Rose of Sharon stands out from a lot of other stuff. This thing, when it first came out, got some of the highest ratings, not just of any Connecticut cigar out there, but of any cigar I've ever heard of. Like multiple reviewers giving this cigar a 99 and a hundred out of a hundred. And that's from the critics, not from the people. This is an incredible thing because critics tend to be, well, sort of critical about cigars. So there has to be something sort of special about this blend. And I'll just tell you about its insides because it does something pretty fascinating with the blend. So on a plant, on a tobacco plant that grows in the field, you have several layers of the plant. There's seco leaves that grow on the bottom. There's viso leaves that grow more in the middle and there's ligero leaves that grow toward the top. And those are responsible in most cigars for a lot of the power that you get, especially if those cigars have power. This plant blend right here for a more mild Connecticut does use some of that uh, Lijero blend from the top, but here's how it goes. It uses Nicaraguan Seco and Viso along with the Dominican Lijero. And while everybody's going crazy about Nicaraguan Lijero and the strength and spice and pepper that it offers, this one focuses more on a Dominican leaf to provide a little bit more strength, which is an interesting way to go after strength, especially for a cigar that is in the mild range. So all around, this is billed as a more medium strength Connecticut blend, not fully mild, because it does have a little bit of a zesty kick of spice to it, or at least it's supposed to. And aside from that, apparently a flavor profile that will earn it a 99 or 100 in a cigar review. I am skeptical and I have smoked plenty of these and even reviewed this cigar before but today I want to take it through a fresh review to see how the qualities kept up over the years and what the Rose of Sharon really has to offer and the only way to find out is with a cut and a light. One more thing this does have a closed foot on it so I'm not going to toast the foot I'm literally just going to light right in. Okay, so the kickoff on this has got a couple of, I mean, a couple of more complex things going on. I think this is what gets people about the Rose of Sharon is because it has this complexity to it with Connecticut's can be really hard to do. Let me lay it out for you. Now, first of all, smooth, really thick smoke, chewy smoke comes through on this cigar. And that smoke is very much like Flavor-wise, Connecticut in nature. Flavor notes on this really center around cedar and almonds, which are not altogether uncommon for Connecticut. Pretty damn common for Connecticut notes. But also, just in the back of, this thro of the throat, this spice just grips the back of the throat. And the spice, like on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd put this spice at maybe around a 3. So not overwhelming spice. Not a lot of it. Not so much that like if you really, really don't like spice, it might leave a bad first impression. But it's also something that can change with time. We're going to keep an eye on that. But the complexity of this comes through really in like the difference between that creamy, smooth, thick, chewy smoke and that sort of zesty spiciness that comes through on this cigar. Spice, black pepper on a cigar can definitely toast out more delicate flavor notes. And in this blend, it's not doing that because again, the spice is a lot more subtle. So a really nice complex kickoff with a pretty simple flavor profile still has plenty of strength to grow. So let's jump into the first third and see where this takes us. Yeah, buddy. All right, the first third here, and I'm trying not to rave too much about this cigar. I already know I really like this blend, and I've given it high ratings before. But here in the first third, first of all, the burn is not quite perfect. It's burning a little higher on this side than it is on this side. It's a box press cigar. This can be a thing that happens with box press blends. So I'm going to turn that down, see if I don't have to touch it up. It may lose a point or two along the way for burn. 
holding a nice, beautiful ash and a draw that is just perfect in terms of resistance. Again, I use a scale of one to 10 for draw. If one is completely, you know, plugged and 10 is so loose that it doesn't even matter, uh, that this is like in the five to six area. There's a little bit of resistance here, but not so much that, uh, that I feel like a lot of resistance in a draw actually costs flavor. Now for that profile, this first third, where that flavor development has come through has been brilliant, brilliant. So through the retrohale, a little bit of black pepper, maybe a one or two on black pepper, not a lot of it, just enough to let you know that it's there. Along with that, really beautiful vanilla sweetness comes across on this. And that adds to this like really complex flavor that's not together common for Connecticut blends like this. You like a lot of guys, I think blend to Connecticut and they're like, I just don't want it to fall flat on its face for flavor. I want it to have something, but this has got a lot of like dynamic complexity. It continues to spill through with really nice cedar, really nice almonds. That spice in the back of the throat has now kind of died away, which is very common with cigars. You find spice right at light up that kind of falls into the background, whether it's just your palate getting used to it or it's the actual spice dying away. There is a lot less of it now. That's about a one or a two. So lots of flavor coming through really clearly with very subtle hints of black pepper and spice and a medium strength cigar that's still very creamy and at this point now very sweet performing really well in the first third here now let's take it into the second third and of course see where this takes us well at this point i do seem to be having a rather pernicious burn issue with this cigar it just sort of wants to almost canoe on one side and i've been holding that bad burn down and uh that does sometimes work and sometimes it doesn't maybe it's just the roll in this case so i'm going to touch it up Loses a couple of points for that. But even still, through the second third, as the burn has been a more than a little bit wobbly here, I've gotten great flavor on this cigar. That same flavor profile from the first third really rings through with an addition of a single note. And that's a bit of a mineral, almost a salty note on the top of the mouth, and like the top of the palate. You kind of get this mineral note sometimes. Aganorsa talks about this with their cigars, with their Criollo 98 and Corojo 99 blends. Certainly with this cigar, I'm getting that. Whether or not that's a like a pro or a con for you is really up to each person. Some people really like a note like that. In this flavor profile, I'm appreciating the continued growth of diversity in this flavor. Just lots of different types of flavors going on. So subtle now with the pepper and with the spice that it's just pretty smooth running. And again, this is a cigar that Surprisingly, I don't recommend very often to people who are just getting into cigars. I want to tell you why this is. When you first get into cigars and you're learning about all of the, you know, different parts of cutting and lighting and enjoying the flavor and just enjoying what you enjoy about the cigar, there's a lot to it. And this is a cigar that takes a little bit more palate to really kind of get what comes with it, to get all of the nuances of the flavor. So I typically recommend for a lot of people just getting into cigars, some other Connecticut's that are a little simpler that you can grab simpler notes out of like cedar and then work your way into more complex Connecticut's like this one, which has a little bit more to offer. I think about this the same way that I think about music. If I'm gonna go learn a new musical instrument, I buy the cheapest one I can find and I'll learn to do some cool stuff on that. That way when I get a nice instrument, Man, do I really appreciate a good action, the, the distance of the strings from the fretboard or something like that. Some really good stuff comes out of growing into what you're getting into. So still a good cigar for beginners, just not necessarily a first cigar. Now take a look at the wrapper on this with me. This Ecuador Connecticut wrapper is a very, very light color of brown. I mean, I, I like to say coffee with cream in it color, but this one's actually even really light. I mean, very, very smooth leaf, but very light in color color, especially as compared with a lot of other Connecticut's I've seen, much lighter grade of leaf. Very, very thin veins on this cigar, and all, all presentation shows a very thin wrapper leaf on the outside. Although this is a, a wrapper leaf that from cigar to cigar is typically pretty damn free of blemishes and a very deeply constructed cap on it, which is great if you're using a deep V cutter to cut these. The last thing you want to do is cut past the cap. And of course, the pink Band. This is what I knocked this cigar for so much before I ever tried it. 
Thank God the thing tastes good, but they used a pink presentation for the Rose of Sharon, which I guess makes sense for a cigar that dons the name Rose on the band. It makes plenty of sense, but I digress. Now I want to take this thing into the final third to see where it stands and what kind of score that it gets, because this thing has done really well so far, but for consistency, it took a little bit of time to come to life. I want to see how much it can hold on to that life as we go into the final third. It's a big part of the experience. If just the second third of the cigar is good, it's not a great cigar. So let's take this into the final third and again, see where it takes us and what kind of score it gets. Well, this flavor profile is tapering off here in the final third. Things are just kind of falling away into the abyss of nothingness, which is not a great sign for consistency. The best parts of this flavor, that cedar, that vanilla sweetness, the almonds, that even the pepper and spice have just kind of died away now is even a little bit of heat has been introduced into this. Although one thing Robert Holt always told me is he said, you know, with a Southern Draw cigar, hold them right below the burn. You'll find that it's not incredibly hot. And for most of the cigar, that's true. It's really below the burn warm now, although I can still hold it without burning my fingers, which is an impressive point for construction and actually one way I measure other cigars as I smoke them. How hot is it right below the burn? At the same time, the final third here has, still has this very nice clean finish. And to me, that is a hallmark of a good cigar. So many cigars have consistency issues in, at the very end. So many of them take time to come to life at the beginning. At the very end, that flavor kind of gets muted. This is a normal thing. But if that like that mutedness comes with a lot of heat or imperfections or a tartness or bitterness, then that's a really bad sign. It will lose even more points for that. This cigar has maintained this cleanness all the way through. And that's been a beautiful, beautiful spot for this. Aside from this very interesting dynamic flavor that I've gotten all the way through the thing. And so overall, my smoking time on this has been an hour and 15 minutes on this Robusto size, a 5.5 inch Robusto here. And my score came out to a 92. Surprised me because when I initially reviewed this cigar, which was years ago, I gave it a 95 and still think it's an outstanding, very complex blend and one that I would highly recommend to people who are working their way into the cigar world and want to try something that's a nice, refined Connecticut blend. They lost a few points here and there, mostly due to construction with the burn and a couple of things with consistency on the front end and on the back end. But overall, still a great blend that I love recommending to people. But of course, what really matters here is what you guys think of these. So if you've had Southern Draws, Rose of Sharon, drop a comment down below and let everyone know what you think of it, because we'll all learn better when we learn together. And of course, join the community on Cigars Daily Plus. Thank you all so much for watching. This is Tim, signing off for Cigars Daily, and I will see you in the comments.